right, let's welcome in our morning guest at this moment. Gorang Shah is uh, with us. Lancelot Dakuna will join us as well as Amar Singh is joining us this uh, morning. Gorang, let's start with you. What are your picks? Morning, Pankaj. Well, Hindalco happens to be when you were just flashing it out. It has been one of the top performers uh, in the post era. And of course, uh, now virtually we are looking at uh, 9000 levels. So, Hindalco happens to be a positive coverage amongst the metal pack and uh, target could be somewhere close to about 220-225. The next one is Phenolex Cables. Uh, great set of numbers, one of the largest cable manufacturing company, electrical as well as telecom. Uh, great uh, product recall uh, from customers and of course in terms of new launches and capex quite optimistic uh, with the earnings that the company has delivered so far uh, 525 530 would be the target from a long term point of view right uh, just uh, for hindalco there is also market buzz that they may be raising a qip uh, what would be your view say if they actually raise that amount well uh, i think uh, We'll have to just wait and watch as to how the uh, entire, uh, you know, issue unfolds, Pankaj. Uh, but, you know, fundraising, if it is related with uh, CAPEX investment, it definitely augurs well. Uh, and my sense is that, uh, you know, with the government uh, view of uh, consumer, consuming more and more ferrous, non-ferrous uh, hard commodities which are made in India rather than uh, give uh, some tailwind to the dumping that has been happening. I think this uh, augurs extremely well and the fact also remains that uh, the government is committed towards building a very strong infrastructure and that's one of the reasons why the finance minister has allocated somewhere close to about 4 lakh crores towards the development of infrastructure, both renewing as well as a new one. So yes, uh, it would. Uh, we believe that uh, two commodities will, do a very sig will play a very significant role. One is metals, another one is cement. All right. Um, I think Lancelot is also joining us now. Uh, he will be uh, joining us now. Uh, and uh, uh, Gorang, uh, you're bullish on the commodity space. Uh, we, we have picked up uh, some uh, developments, you know, some uh, messages also coming in to customers that uh, private sector banks are now going to start charging for uh, cash transactions after a minimum, uh, say, four transactions. You're going to have to pay for cash transactions. Does this materially impact uh, the banks uh, at all? Um, if there is uh, further usage of their mobile apps, uh, what kind of cost efficiencies should one start building into uh, earnings and, uh, uh, you know, better performance from banks? Well, I think it's still work in progress and I don't think this will be implemented uh, in terms of, because there will be too much of you and cry from the common man. And already we've seen uh, SMS charges, you've seen uh, other related uh, mailer charges, etc., which the bank charges. And uh, over and above that, uh, if you are going to charge for, uh, charge me for my money which I have kept in the bank, uh, and given the fact that I get a minuscule, uh, you know, rate of return in terms of my savings bank account, uh, you know, interest that I get, and at the flip side, uh, the banks get to use my money and they deploy it at a higher rate. So I think it's going to be something that uh, they'll be, uh, I believe, contestant against uh, any such move. But again, you know, quantum of the charge and of course, uh, other income for the banking sector going up uh, could be one of the triggers. But we've been positive uh, uh, on private sector banks and selective public sector banks for a long time and we continue to have a positive view. This is a development story and it's still work in progress. And I don't think that it will be implemented anytime sooner. I hope not. All right. Um, we've already, uh, some customers are already getting SMSs about uh, uh, revision and charges. But uh, Amar, uh, what are your top picks for the day? Yeah, very good morning. Uh, the first uh, topic is Motherson Sumi. Uh, Motherson Sumi, we've seen it uh, uh, trading significantly higher and it's close to its uh, August 2016 high of uh, 360 levels. So once that is taken out, it, it has a rally of almost 10% uh, towards 395, 400 levels. So from a short term perspective, any pullback towards uh, 357 uh, levels or so can be used as a buying opportunity. And uh, uh, with a stop loss of uh, 353 and a target of 370. So that's one, uh, that's the first one. The second is in the metal pack, that is uh, sale. Uh, sale technically has been very strong on the charts. And uh, yesterday's rally was also uh, was also very uh, strong. So 
Uh, sale can be a buy in the region of 62 and 62.50 with a stop loss of uh, uh, 60 and a target of uh, 66.50. And the third is from the banking space, that is uh, Kotak Mahindra Bank. Uh, overall, technically, Kotak Mahindra Bank is, is strong on the charts. And it is yet to, however, breach its uh, November 2016 high of uh, 833. Uh, so any uh, pullback towards 815 levels or so can be used uh, as a buying opportunity uh, with a stop loss of uh, 795 and a target of uh, 859. Right. Uh, meanwhile, as you were giving your picks, Bajaj Auto has just declared the FEP sales numbers. Remember, most of the companies declared its numbers yesterday, but Bajaj has come out, has come out this morning. 2.73 lakh units. We'll be talking to the management at 10.15, and it seems to be a good number. Basically, there was an expectation of decline, but you can see clearly that it's absolutely on the flattish side. I think the decline expected was around 3%. Uh, so that's that's been on a flat side. So 2.73 in terms of uh, the total units versus about 2.72. Absolutely flat numbers. Even Hero Motor Corp, which declared declared a decline, but still the numbers were looking good. So for Bajaj, it's it's better than expected. For Hero also, it has been better than expected. So let's just look at the auto sales numbers which came out post-market hours. So we have Bajaj, the first one, 2.73 lakh units, better than estimates. Let's look at TVS as well, 2.11 lakh units. It's about 4,000 lesser than what the street was estimating. So it's about 2.15 that the street was looking at, and they've done about 2.11. Don't really think it's a big disappointment, but a marginal one. Uh, the scooters business continue to do well, 2.9% and growth over there. So 69,000 is what they've done on the scooter side. As far as Hero Motor Corp is concerned, the expectations were close to 5 lakh units and they've done about 5.24 lakh units. There, the decline or the extent of decline was very high in the first two months. That's November, December and Jan. And then uh, you saw February, which is uh, largely on the positive side. Still, it's a decline of 5%, but it's better than what Street was estimating. Tata Motors for their India business first. So 47,500, absolutely in line. In fact, it's 500 units higher. But MHCV within that grew by about 1.1%. MHCV, remember, is coming off a low base for Tata Motors, but still uh, has not been able to grow. Still just growing about 1, 1.5%. Also, for Tata Motors, uh, or rather their JLR business, uh, you know, we got... Uh, uh, their U.S. retail sales for JLR, which seems to be very good. So if I look at the total number, it's a growth of around 16.4%, 9,200 units in their release. They have mentioned that it's the best ever month that they have done into the U.S. markets. Jaguar has done 130% growth and Land Rover is down about 10 odd percent. But Land Rover has been growing down because of lack of launches and Jaguar has been going up because the focus of the management is there. JLR U.S. sales was also particularly good. And another stock that will be in focus today will be DLF. Uh, this finally, uh, this was expected and some news is coming in. DLF promoters will sell about 40% stake in their rental arm uh, to and buyers here are the Singapore Sovereign Fund GIC. Um, uh, the rental arm is actually DLF Cyber City developers. Uh, in an exclusive agreement with GIC, uh, they are looking to sell stake, uh, which is that the promoters will sell their stake uh, in their rental arm. DLF, the company company will continue to hold 60% stake in DLF Cyber City. The management says that they expect the deal execution to take another 2-3 months and the money is expected to come in uh, uh, to the company by uh, uh, this deal. The money from this deal is expected to come in in the September quarter. Now this money, uh, some people are estimating could be as much to the tune of uh, 12 to 13,000 crore rupees. And this will help reduce uh, DLF's debt, which now stands at 24,397 crore rupees. DLF in any case has moved up and this is certainly going to be good news for the stock and investors if the debt on uh, DLF, a developer, is going to come down. Well, the management at DLF will be joining us at 9.30 a.m. today. So in the next 20 minutes, you'll hear also from the management of uh, management of DLF on why essentially this uh, particular deleveraging exercise, what sort of debt is likely to be reduced. Uh, Walkhard is a stock that will be in focus. So they have a U.S. subsidiary, which has uh, one plant over there, and that supplies to the U.S. market. Now, that has received a warning letter from U.S. FDA. Remember, it already had the Form 483. It's a new plant that we are talking about. And now that warning letter has been, uh, sorry, that uh, Form 483, 
has been escalated to a warning letter. This comes in at a subsidiary of uh, Walkhard, which is uh, incorporated into the uh, US. Estimated sales are close to about 13, 13.5% uh, for this particular company. They don't give plant-wise detail, but that's the estimate that the street is going with. Existing sales will not be impacted. However, they have some applications and future approvals from there, which definitely will now not get approved. That's essentially what a warning letter means. Say if it is escalated to an import alert, which now, of course, uh, we don't have any independent confirmation, but if it happens, then uh, the existing sales would get impacted. Uh, three facilities in India, uh, Wokhard has, and all three are under import alert, so that continues to be, and US FDA uh, impact on uh, Wokhard seems to be slightly higher. All their three Indian plants are under import alert, and now the US plant, also US FDA issues have got escalated. Wokhard, at the bottom of your screen, is indicating a 4% sort of a decline start in the pre-open session. And of course, there are a few other stocks we're watching out for on news developments. And uh, two stocks here are Grasim and AV Nuvo. Uh, there is an EGM voting on uh, uh, Grasim's merger with AV Nuvo on April 6th. The voting via postal ballot and e-voting will begin from March 6th. Uh, the voting will remain open for 30 days uh, until 5th of April and the Birla Group had announced a proposed merger between Grasim and AV Nuvo in August 2016. Right. Uh, Narana Rudrale and Panesha Biotech will also be in focus. Uh, Panesha Biotech uh, was up around 13% yesterday on the news flow that Narana Rudrale is in talks to buy uh, one of their hospitals. But uh, management, uh, that's management of Narayana Rudrale has given a clarification that uh, they have been in talks currently under the due diligence process, but uh, back since 2015, uh, this particular conversation is going on. As of now, it's uh, nothing material that uh, they would want to tell the exchanges. Gaurang, just quickly before we open, what do you make of the DLF news? Well, Pankaj, I think I hope it works out because this news flows has been there in the public domain for a long time and the company has been trying to reduce the debt on the balance sheet by selling off non-core businesses and land parcel. Uh, we have a coverage, but it's a sell-on rally. We, we feel that there are better uh, stocks, companies in the real estate spec to invest from a long-term point of view. Right, and quickly on Walkhard as well? Well, again, we had a sell coverage. Our targets were achieved. No-brainer, it's a sell-on rally again. Right, uh, so Walkhard and DLF both have uh, been sell uh, for Gorang, uh, both have given uh, some news flow. Wokhard is expected to go on the downside. However, for DLF, the news seems to be on the positive side. Uh, in terms of uh, opening, let's just uh, look at it. 8,982 is what the pre-open session has uh, indicated. So it's not exactly at the 9,000 level. That's the uh, first ticks for you. 8,984, that's where the open is. I think it's around the first resistance. So it's not uh, gone towards the second resistance. It's still 10 points away from that. 145 points higher uh, for the Sensex. SPI is up 0 0.75. Axis Bank is doing well. It's up 0 0.7. Sun Pharma is up 5 rupees. Idea Cellular, 113.7. Tata Steel did well yesterday. It's up another 2 rupees today. Bank of Baroda is up 1.2. Bajaj Auto, that's reacting to numbers. Numbers, if you would look at it, one would say it's flat, but it's not flat because it was expected to be a decline. So that's why these numbers have come in as a positive. Bajaj Auto is doing well. TVS Motors is not reacting much. However, the numbers were not that great. And at the same time, I think that these numbers are not so bad that it would lead to downgrades as well. That's Hero Motor Corp for you. Again, numbers were declining on a YOY basis, but they were better than estimates. So 3,205. Tata Motors on your screen, it's reacting to two pieces of news. One is the Indian numbers, one is the JLR North American numbers. JLR North American numbers were better than estimates, still up around 5 rupees uh, at this point of time. Let's look at DLF as well. Much expected uh, in terms of news flow and it's absolutely flat. Clearly no change. So it, I think in the pre-open session it was indicating 155, 156, uh, but uh, when it's opened, it's just around 153. So a lot of news flow regarding the private sector banking names. ICICI is, is up about 1.2%. They are likely to increase their cash charges from today. Let's look at HDFC Bank, absolutely flat, 10,000 shares in terms of volume. Axis Bank has also given a similar notice, which is about 1% growth. So 500, 518 uh, as far as Axis Bank is concerned. Walk hard, uh, US FDA woos continue and that's a 5% decline, 710 five and a half lakhs close to six lakh and now it's six lakhs plus in terms of volumes traded so that's a heavy volume uh, uh, mover with about a five percent decline grassim there has been an update regarding the ab nuvo merger 6th april is when the egm is that's what the management has said post it's just an ongoing update regarding grassim and aditya birla uh, nuvo merger that's grassim for you ab nuvo i think they should move in tandem because they are going to merge so probably you know the arbitrages of uh, the share swap ratio would tend to come in uh, that's ab nuvo narana rudrale is is uh, up around 0.64. Let's look at Panacea Biotech. I think that one will be interesting uh, because that's uh, that one went up about 11 to 12 odd percent 
uh, earlier. It's up another 3% today. So there is a confirmation that they are in talks and due diligence is happening. It's at about 175, 176, 72,000 shares for Panisha Biotech. Don't forget that it... Uh, it went up, uh, you know, close to about 15% yesterday as well. Vedanta is up 1.7. In fact, the entire metal pack did, did exceptionally well uh, yesterday. So whether it was Hindalco, whether it was Nalco, Tata Steel, all of them are gaining that momentum today. Not that metal stocks have seen, uh, metal underlying metals have seen some great rally overnight, but these stocks have continuously seen buying. Tata Steel went to the levels of 500 yesterday. It's up another two to three odd rupees. That's Tata Steel uh, for you. Nalco was uh, doing well. Hindalco, Vedanta, all these names. Uh, are doing uh, decently well. Anisha, any other names that you can pick up on the volume side? Well, uh, Tata Teleservices continues with its good run. It's again up 8%. Uh, some unusual names like Rico, Auto and Intellect Design Arena are seeing moves of 4% on uh, larger than usual volumes. Then amongst the metals count, we mentioned Vedanta, even Nalco is seeing a strong up move today. It's up 3%. Uh, we also have Balarpur Industries up 3% and IRB up 2%. Madhusan Sumi is another pick from one of our guests and that one is up uh, 2%. On the losing end, uh, Walkhart is now down 5%. Dish TV is seeing a down move. Uh, it's at about 95 rupees, down 2%. Uh, and the DLF is also now seeing some unprofit taking, you know, maybe it ran up ahead of, um, you know, uh, the entire uh, deal announcement coming through and perhaps some amount of profit taking coming in now. Uh, so DLF uh, amongst the stocks that is lower. Uh, but basically, it's the usual names from the banking uh, stocks that have uh, moved up higher. And that is what, um, uh, I mean, these are the usual names there. Uh, Amar, uh, what do you make of the move we saw in uh, the Shobha a day earlier? Now, all the real estate stocks have gained a lot, but we saw a big, big move coming into Shobha a day earlier. Uh, what levels are you watching out for? Yeah, overall, uh, if I look at uh, Shobha uh, Limited, it's uh, currently around 325, uh, 3, uh, 326 levels. So, uh, overall, what we are seeing in the uh, real estate pack is that somewhat the rally that is there some uh, somewhere there is some profit booking also coming in and some realization that uh, that uh, how interest rates because uh, overall they would be looking forward to the rbi policy also going forward in terms of interest rates so uh, so i would see that it would be on the upper side cap towards uh, 335 340 levels on the upside that could be capped whereas on the on the downside uh, uh, 295 to 300 would be a level of support Right. Amar, do you have a, a nifty strategy? Uh, is this a time to be prudent or uh, can you uh, still uh, look to buy uh, the nifty? Because uh, after a two-day correction, the markets have again gone up. All the corrections seem very shallow. Uh, any strategy for the nifty? Yeah, overall, looking at nifty, the way uh, nifty uh, corrected and then uh, bounced back uh, yesterday and again today, there was a gap up opening, clearly reflecting that there is strength in the market. And overall, it's not only uh, the domestic market. If you look at the international markets, it's the overall wave of uh, uh, positive sentiments and movements in the international market. So nifty is also gaining from that. That's one of the factors. Technically speaking, on the upside, 9,000 uh, would act as a psychological level. And uh, uh, so there would be some profit booking coming around the, that levels. And also uh, because uh, the earlier high in March 2015 was 9,119. So, so that's not very far off from the current level. So people uh, or investors would be looking at uh, uh, being slightly uh, on the cautious side uh, because they would be uh, waiting and watching for some fresh figures. For a trader's market, yes, any uh, pullback towards... Uh, uh, 8840, uh, 8850 uh, means a 30, 40-point correction can be used as a buying opportunity with a stop loss uh, below 8900 and again targeting somewhere around 8985 uh, to 8990. All right. Uh, so uh, that's the uh, levels to watch out for on the Nifty. Uh, Gurank, uh, what would you do with Tara Motors? Uh, Tara Motors sports its earnings saw very uh, precipitous drop. It has regained some ground, but uh, of, over the last few sessions has again been on the losing spree. Uh, do you think the worst is now behind Tana Motors? Uh, are these levels where investors can look to buy? So, Nisha, we had had a positive view on Tata Motors even when the China slowdown happened. Then we had the Brexit. Uh, then we had the uncertainty in terms of the 45th president being elected uh, and his policies and uh, Ball attacks, etc. Stock corrected a little bit. Uh, post uh, 
the numbers uh, we are maintaining a positive coverage so uh, under all the negative circumstances we have maintained a positive outlook on tata motors we believe that uh, the new launches uh, both in terms of hexa tiaggio and many more to come from domestic business and equally so new launches from the jlr shed uh, with new manufacturing capacities and capabilities coming up uh, both tata motor shares as well as dr dvr we are extremely positive on it and uh, my belief is that somewhere there is a tailwind of this gst implementation first july 2017 which could kick in and of course the scrappage policy if it is put in place at the ground level uh, then uh, you know your domestic business passenger car new launches your jlr uh, launches and of course top end luxury cars along with that the tailwind of commercial vehicle and with that the positivity of uh, defense uh, light infantry vehicles and armored vehicles so we believe that the downside from here is extremely extremely limited and it's a great opportunity to go and buy tata motors from a long term point of view and hold it in your portfolio all right so very positive and tata motors we also have lancelot dukuna joining us now good morning lancelot what are your top picks well i think uh, you know in this kind of a market it's a little difficult to you know find uh, stocks which have value but i think mcx uh, has been one company which uh, has been a little bit maybe ignored by the market for a while but we have seen improvement in the commodity cycle as well as commodity prices and that is uh, something that augurs well for a commodity exchange especially because they have almost 80% of the metals uh, volumes being traded there also the po a positive that uh, sebi has now allowed options trading on uh, the commodity exchanges that could become a large volume booster for mcx and if you look at its cost structure almost 85% of its costs are fixed which gives it a great uh, opportunity for operating leverage because as the volumes go up you'll start seeing the uh, you know the benefit kick in the bottom line since costs remain more or less fixed so i think from a you know if one is a patient investor willing to wait out you know maybe a upside and a downside when there is any correction mcx could be a good opportunity to add to your portfolio and you know uh, sit on this stock when and ride out this side this time the commodity rise which would should be coming in uh lancelot uh, we see number of retail uh, oriented names seeing sharp rally so the last few session uh perhaps uh, with all the buzz surrounding a new ipo for dmart coming through uh do you think uh, uh, this is a good bet uh, the retail space do you have any picks there well uh, the retail space you know uh, a company the coffee day enterprises is something that is an interesting idea in the retail space especially since uh, we are seeing traction in this space and you know we have seen uh, you know the the price really sell off post its ipo and uh, it did come out with good numbers uh, this time this quarter we are expecting some kind of a you know maybe profits to grow going forward driven by the uh, improved ebitda that we are uh, seeing at the store level so from uh, uh, you know the coffee day enterprises could be an interesting idea to to look at as an investment given that you know valuations of other retail companies are fairly high at this point in time and uh, we could we could expect earnings to grow from these levels and that could be an interesting idea in the retail space all right uh, amar have you had a look uh, at the chart of uh, jubilant food works uh, it is uh, above levels um, the highs that it made on 6th of february when it saw 10% move coming through this is also a quasi retail kind of uh, story here uh, what are the levels you're looking out for for jubilant food works yeah overall uh, looking at jubilant uh, food works we've seen again a strong rally uh, today and uh, uh, it is uh, it has breached its uh, resistance of uh, 1040 1035 1040 so it's it's headed towards 1100 levels because overall uh, technically speaking it is uh, strong the only thing is that it needs to sustain consistently above 1035 1040 Uh, because uh, technically speaking, the charts are uh, charts are looking strong for Jubilant Food Works. So if it sustains above 1035, 1040 on a closing basis, then it can uh, head towards 1100 levels. Whereas on the downside, uh, support uh, uh, for the stock would be around 980 to uh, 990 levels on the downside. 
Gorang, what will be your view on uh, Jubilant Foodworks? There is an upgrade which has come from Goldman today, probably that is taking uh, the stock higher, which says that competitive intensity in e-commerce has gone down. And uh, maybe that's the reason why Domino's could start to outperform the market rather than underperform what it has done earlier. So, Pankaj, from the time it got listed, uh, the 3SG, that is the same store sales growth rate, was clocking fantastic run rate. Then we had the exit of one of the uh, top uh, level uh, executives, uh, Mr. Call. Then we had a certain downtick and historically downside uh, number from the triple SG uh, since his listing. And then a recovery. Uh, Dunkin' Donuts happens to be a major hangover on the balance sheet. And equally so, the new product that was launched, uh, the uh, chocolate cookie pizza. Now, I fail to understand why one would have that kind of a product. I mean, if you want to buy a chocolate, you go and buy a chocolate. If you want to eat a cookie, you go and buy a cookie and eat a cookie. Why buy a chocolate cookie pizza? I think it's a disaster. And nevertheless, we are positive on the stock and uh, post it corrected down 1,000 levels. We've uh, remained uh, uh, positive in terms of the recovery, like you were actually mentioning, Pankaj. And uh, our sense is that it has got a great uh, brand recall, customer loyalty, uh, new launches minus what we've just uh, spoken about would add to the trigger. And in terms of competition, well, uh, I hope that the new stores that are being launched will throw in positivity. And let's understand one thing, this is not only present in India, they've got franchising in Sri Lanka and Nepal and Bangladesh as well. So we believe that uh, it's a great theme and if you have to believe that the consumption and spending is going to see an uptick and traction, then this is one of the uh, stocks that you should possibly look at post the correction. Thank you so much, gentlemen, for joining us uh, this morning. Gorang, just before we go, any disclosures? Well, no personal holdings in the stocks that we have discussed, but uh, the Ericos could be a part of our client's portfolio. Lancelot, for you? I don't have any holdings in the stocks discussed, but maybe clients will be holding these shares in their portfolios. Thank you so much, gentlemen, for taking out time for us.